Welcome everyone to Istanbul for today's game against Basaksehir. More specifically, welcome to the Opticians. I am of course having an eye appointment. But before I crack on with that, we do have some games to catch up on. We have the end of the January transfer window and then we have today's game. So without further ado, let's hop into Football Manager 21 and crack on with those. Okay, so after a disappointing upset in the cup, we headed away to Basiktas. And as you can see, Gerkan, against the runner play, smashed a volley in the upper left-hand side of the goal. We was on the back foot for the most of this game, to be honest, but that one goal managed to steal it for us. They had 16 shots in the end to our four. Six on target to our one. Luckily, the one went up into the top corner. 2.56 xG to our 0.49. Nine corners to our one. Ten fouls to our 11. Zero yellow cards to our one. 85% passing to our 88 and 47% possession to our 53. Like I said, 62nd minute goal for Gerkan. 67th minute Muller Lassen went and got a yellow card and then they had a penalty. It was a lovely save from Zubzuk. I'll save that to the end though because of course after it shows it it's going to pop out into the other results. So I'll put the cut after that. So first of all let's have a little look at how our players got on. As you can see Zubzuk solid 9 rating in goal. 8 for Omar on the left hand side. Central defence 7.5 and 6.9. Great for Gordinho who got that 7.5. He actually overperformed compared to Obilor, so he's definitely hunting for that Obilor spot. Of course, we've got him in on loan for this season. Muller Lassen on the right hand side with a 7.3. Central midfield, Chirok and Emrehan got 7.2 and 7 respectively. Right hand side, Gerkan with that 7.4 and a goal. 6.6 .6 was a little disappointing from Recap in central attacking mid. 6.7 for Aaron on the left and Matt up front again disappointing with a 6.5. Oskan though came on, got a 7, that's nice to see for Amet. We then have Milinkovic with a 7.1 coming in on this left hand side and Kun with a 6.6 .6 on the right hand side. So let's go have a look at that penalty and then have a look at those other two games. First of all the penalty where we have Zubzuk one on one. We know how this one finishes. Beautiful save though from Zubzuk. Okay, so the next game took us away to Goztep, our third away game in a row. And as you can see, the goalkeeper did absolutely awful. Mehmet beating him to the ball, smashing it in on the left-hand side. We then have Omar on the left-hand side, whips and across to Emreham, plays it short to Milinkovic, ball across to Gerkan. And as you can see, the goalkeeper smacks it into his own net. He had a very iffy moment before that, and Mehmet... Again, smashes another one into the left-hand side. Now, Kublai working from the back, plays up to Emrehan. Mehmet makes a lovely run. Through ball to Milinkovic, gets past his man. Slots it in the bottom right. 4-0 going into half-time. Held on to that going through the second half, and it was a comfortable victory in the end. They went from overperforming to showing their true colours when they played us. So we had 12 shots to their 4, 5 on target to their 1, 1 1.7 xg to their 0.48, 5 corners to 4, 7 fouls to their 22. I think the discipline was their main issue. 1 yellow card to our uh, 1 yellow card to their 4, sorry. Passes completed it was 91% for us, for uh, 84% pass in completion for them. 61% possession to their 39. As you can see, they had a little bit of a disciplinary issue. I didn't actually notice this guy got sent off. I should have probably pushed on a little bit more. But yeah, they had him sent off. A couple more yellow cards. Milinkovic getting a last minute yellow card for himself. But the team, as you can see, performed great. Everyone who started had a good game. Zubzuk, 7.3. Backline of 7.6, 7.5, 7.1 and 7.1. 7.1 and 7.1 again for Shirok and Emrehan. 7.4 for Milinkovic on the left. On the right, Gerkan got the 7.3. 8.6 for Mehmet and a 6.8 for Mad. Mad still not really scoring, but he's put in a decent performance in this game. Musin came in, got a 6.9 over on this left-hand side. Basically, I was resting players at this point. We then have Recaf. He came on, got a 6.8 to rest Mehmet. We had Sinan Kert, I believe I swapped recap back here. Sinan then slotted in 
to the central attack in mid roll. An anal came on, got 6.6 .6 up front. A little bit disappointing, but he's our backup striker. So that was the second game. How did we get on in that third one, though? Well, the third game saw us play against a fellow European candidate. And, well, as you can see, it was a very 50 50 game. We managed to slot one goal past them, and that ended up being the decider. They had eight shots on target to our eight. Sorry, eight in total. They had three on target to our four. Don't know why I'm reading this way around. We had a 1.17 xG to their 0.39. Seven corners to 12, 12 fouls to their 10. One yellow card to two yellow cards. 89% passing to their 85. 52% possession to 48. So, was narrowly better. The xG, not quite there. I think it was more Galatasaray just wasn't making good opportunities. They were making opportunities, just not very good ones. So, as you can see, a lot of players played admirably. Few players in there who didn't do so good. Gordinho was struggling with a 6.5. Same with Madden in the starting lineup, but Zubzuk got a 7.3. Lassen with a 7.4. Kublai with a 7.4. 7.4 Omar. Central midfield, Chirot got 7.1. Emery Hand 7.2. Gerkan with a 7.9 on Lorette. Milinkovic with a 6.8. 6.9 from Mehmet. And, well, the bench was pretty decent too. Ovilar came on, got a 6.9 for the struggling Gordinho. We then had recap he struggled with a 6.6 .6. and then we had a 6.8 for Erin so that's not bad Erin coming on and getting a 6.8 and yep nice result in the end managed to get three victories out of three games can't really complain with that especially considering we have Besiktas and Galatasaray but we now play the big boys of Basaksehir who again much like Galatasaray are pushing for the those European spots so Let's go have a little look at those. But before we do, we do have a few players to look at. So we'll go ahead to the transfer screen. I'll see you there in just a second. Right, so as you can see, we're on the transfer screen. And well, we haven't done much transfers this January window. We've actually been planning more for next season. Like I said, I didn't really plan to make massive changes over this January window, at least to the team right now. We have made a couple of additions for next year though. So first of all, in this January window, we've got these two out on loan. You also know we brought in Lorenzo Godinho from Sundows on a loan. And I believe I mentioned that he's available to transfer. Well, we did end up transferring him. I liked how he got on in his first game, as you can see. He struggled in that second. He had an average of 7.5. It's dropped to a 7.03, but that's still a decent average. Three and a half star, three and a half star potential, of course. He's from South Africa. He is settling in history, as you can see. He spent a couple of seasons in Denmark, but he's been in South Africa for the rest of his career. So we've got Lorenzo Gordinho. He's got that 12 aggression. Everything else is well rounded as a central defender. He can even play as a ball playing defender and as you can see as a ball playing defender he's also solid in that passing does lack a little bit he's got a 10 on that personal is balanced which is nice to see we don't really care about his goalkeeper rating being a three five foot nine so he's a bit on the short side but he's not too short so that's not too bad we've got him coming in as a center back he's going to be taking the role of obelor obelor is probably going to drop to the bench I might put him on the bench just depending on terms of captaincy, who's a decent captain. I might leave Obelor in just for that. But the way it's looking, he's probably going to take Obelor's spot. Obelor's going to drop to the bench. We're going to keep Kubele next to whichever one of those two in central defence. And then we have the addition of a left back. Yes, we have an even better left back. I love the mailman to bits. Not so much when he's on international duty disappearing to go play for Iraq, but we do have an even better player than the mailman. So let's just pop to the transfer center. As you can see, Tyler Blackett. Yes, Tyler Blackett, he's going in from Nottingham Forest on a free. Two amazing defenders on a free. As you can see, no compensation is required. Transfer is currently on 15 grand. I don't think we're paying him quite that. I think we're playing him a handsome sum, but not quite that. He's currently rated at four star, four star potential. Not sure if that's going to drop or not, but that's currently how we're valuing him. And while looking at his stats, that's probably an accurate assessment of how well he is. We're not going to use him as a defensive wing back. We'll use him on support. So as you can see, as a supportive wing back, he's decent. Off the ball could do a bit of work, 
Action, Technique. A few of these are a little bit on the weaker side, but they're not bad. He can then also play in this central defensive role. So again, we've got more cover in that center role. role. Ball playing defender. I might even play him as a ball playing defender, depending on what we can do in terms of Turkish players. Because we do need Kublai in the side, not just because he's a decent player, but because he's Turkish. And we can only have seven foreign players out of the 11. So we have to have four Turkish players in the lineup. And Kublai is, well, as good as Blackett and all the others. And why won't we use him if we need the numbers? So, yeah, he's a solid addition. Free transfer. We can't complain at that. Anyone who's interested in his history, as you can see, he's a Manchester United legend. Okay, it pains me to say that, even as a Man U fan. He has played a few games, to be fair. He played five over for Blackpool, eight then for Birmingham. He played 11 whole games for Manchester United in that season. Played none, then went to Celtic on loan, played three games, didn't play for Man U, and then sold him to Reading for 800 grand. Well, to be fair, he got plenty of games for Reading. Went on a free transfer to Nottingham Forest. He's, he didn't do much that first season. He got 13 games the season after, though, and this previous season, 17 appearances, 7 average rating. That's nice to see in the championship. Hopefully he can perform a little bit better when we get into Europe. Please, please. So, yes, I'm being a little bit optimistic, but as you can see from our current situation, it's not too optimistic. We are currently sitting... That's last season. Okay, I'm stuck on last season. As you can see, we had 48 points last season after 38 games. We have that already. We have 48 points after 21 games. We've got 17 games to work with. So what was last year's target? 72. Previous year, 71. If we can hit 72, we should get a top five spot, is what I'm thinking. So 72. We currently have 48. So it's within reach. As you can see, we have quite a gap already. We have a 16-point gap on Denis Lesbar, who's currently in sixth place. So, those top five spots are looking promising. If we can do that, we would be able to get some marvellous players through our doors. In fact, we should be looking into the rules. How much money do we get for being up here? Top five gives us 788,000. That's not bad. That is not bad we obviously need to maintain the form we've been on but like i said we're playing fourth in the league today they are 11 2 and 8 where were they previously okay so they've been up here last year the season before they was up here they was in second okay so they are constant contenders them galatasaray besiktas and is the spore they're always up and around here by the looks of it and Spore though Antelaus 4, aren't they newly promoted? I feel like Antelaus 4 got promoted, and yet they're up here in 5th. I know we're overperforming, but... Um, Antelaus 4, yeah. I expected to be 8th, promoted, which just blows my mind, and we're expected to be 13th, according to the betting odds. So yeah. We have been off to a cracking start, but I'm rambling now. You've seen the transfers. You've seen all the other games. It's time to crack on with today's. So without further ado, let's hop into the team meeting room, and I'll see you fine folks there in just a second. Okay, game time is upon us. We're here in the tactical meeting room. Let's have a little look at what Jason has to suggest. And before we do, very good pitch condition. We have 8,874 tickets sold for today's game even though they have a 17,000 capacity stadium interesting i don't know how they're struggling to sell tickets fifth versus second seems like a big game to me but opposition instructions so we're going to just apply all of those we're not going to make these changes you're going to see the lineup what we've got there the lineup is pretty darn strong so it's our new starting 11 there's two changes from our usual Starting 11 that you're probably used to, but only one of these changes, of course, is going to be changed when the mailman is back. So, Zubzuk in goal, a backline of Omar, Kublai, 
Gordinho and Lassen. We then have in central midfield Chirok and Emrihan. Milinkovic on the left, Gherkan on the right, Mehmet in that central attacking midfield role and Mad up front. A bench consisting of Atbek, Musin, Ahmet, Obilo, Schmelzer, Volkan, Eren, Kun, Sinan and Einol. But without further ado, let's hop into this game. Enough rambling on. As you can see, tactical familiarity has gone down great. The only person complaining is the annoying German. The guy we brought in on the right-hand side who's been a complete and utter disappointment and can, I don't know, go sit in the shed with recap, I guess, because the pair of them are very irritating after that cup tie. So. <sighs> I vented about the two players. They weren't let us down. In the shootout. Now, let's go enjoy another victory. Let's go complete this run. Let's keep the run going, lads. So this is a great opportunity. Show all the pundits that they've been right back you up. Exactly. Head to the tunnel. Uzi Zera Uzna. You have what can only be described as a terrible record. Thank you. Against Okan Baruch in your career. Why have you found it so hard to beat him? Well, he's been managing Basixia, who is a top five team in the league, and I've got a newly promoted team that I'm slowly building up to get up the league. Even now, we might be sat second, but I would say they're probably favourites for this game still. So, um, he's one of the best managers in the game, and uh, hopefully plays... You know, yeah, let's give him a pat on the back. Let's make him feel better than he is. Right. Do you think it's important to lay this particular record to rest? No, not particularly. And are you confident in making that happen? I'm confident, but I don't think it's necessary for me to beat him. I want our team to beat his team. If it means we could stop talking about it. Um, I want to win every match. It doesn't matter if it's against exactly or some other manager. I treat every opponent the same. I want to win every single match. I don't care how big or small the club is, I want to beat them. Best Paul suffered defeat last time. Okay. How will this affect your... It was ages ago. Come on. The team are itching to set the record straight. We're itching. We've got fleas. We probably should have decided a better place to wash our outfits, but we didn't. So our kits are all itchy. But it doesn't matter. Because we have a free kick. Emery Han, edge of the area. Gare can is short if you want to play it short. But he's going alone. Hits the wall. Gherkan will collect it. Plays it to Emre Han. Oh, Mehmet. Unfortunate. We have him there because, of course, he is amazing at long shots. Ali, though, will throw it into Tagia. Tagia gets it over. And they have just gone and passed it to Shirok in the central midfield. That's nice of them. Omar on the left-hand side will now play it to Kublai. Kublai, nice ball over to Milinkovic on this left-hand side. Will Milinkovic get a good cross in, though? Or will he go alone? No. Pulls it back for Shirok. It's a free header for Mehmet Ozkan. Nods in his fourth goal of the season. Five minutes in, ladies and gents. We've had a free kick. That didn't work out. So we just built it up from their awful clearance. And what a lovely goal. Mehmet getting into the box. Mad. I'm disappointed that Mad hasn't been getting onto the end of these. But we'll take Mehmet darting into the box and scoring header. We don't care how they go in as long as we get the victory. So Omar will throw it into Mehmet. Now plays it back to Emrehan. Can Emrehan get anything going? Tries the ball over the top to Milinkovic. He has Omar if he wants to pull it back to him. He does. Omar, will he pull it back for Shirok? Yes. Shirok now through to Milinkovic. Lovely play. And that looked like a penalty to me. Unfortunately, it's not though. Lassen will collect the ball. Plays it to Emrehan. Back to Lassen once more. Now over to Shirok. Milinkovic played through to Omar. No, not back to Shirok. Through to Omar. Omar made a lovely run. Mad shot is blocked by the defence. Shrock though, will knock the clearance down. It's now with Gherkan. He has Lassen on the overlap on this right-hand side. Will Lassan get a cross in, though? Lassan, lovely cross. Near post. Gherkan can't get it. Goes past everyone and Mad taps it into the bottom corner. Yes, that is right. The Madman has got us a goal. Eight minutes in. First ten minutes, we've gone and got 2-0 up. Lovely play by Lassen there to keep it in on the pitch. Plays it across. Gherkan gets tripped by the looks of it from Tagia, but it goes past everyone, like I said. Mad at the back post. Pokes it in. It's a 2-0 lead. You can't be too mad with that one. Especially after I did mention I wanted Mad 
to show a little something after Mehmet scored the opening header and he could have probably got onto the end of it himself. So it's nice to see Matt going and cropping up with a goal in the eighth minute or ninth minute as this has noted it down in the notable events. But that looks like all of the action for the first half. No, it's not. I lie. I tell an untruth. Gordinho will collect it, plays it to Emrahan. Now Lassen on this right-hand side, making a run. Nice ball up to Gerkan. Gerkan, don't be greedy. Whipping across if you need to. Plays it short to Mad. He does have Emrahan. Emrahan to Mehmet now. Mehmet, edge of the area. What a beautiful goal. Like I said, we put him on the edge of the area for free kicks because he can smash him in at range. And he's just shown exactly why with this goal. So Gerkan pulls it back. Plays it over to Mad, Mad gets it to Emrehan, nice ball across the box, and Mehmet just smashes it. Smash it, get the fifth goal of the season into that right-hand side of the net, and it's 3-0 going into half-time. I did tell a very big untruth in that, but that was the end of the highlights for the half, but apparently it's not. We wanted to crop up with yet another goal. So we've got a brace from Mehmet Ozcan in the first half. We've had a goal from Mad. And well, we had nine shots to their two. Five on target to their one. 0.55 XG to their 0.18. One corner to their two. Three fouls to two. Zero yellow cards to one yellow card. 91% passing to their 80. 62% possession to their 38. But let's head into that dressing room. Let's go talk to the lads. Tell them what a lovely job they've done in the first half. Milinkovic, stop being complacent. I'm not happy with that. Kubele and Gordinho, also complacent. One of you might end up going off if you're going to sit and be complacent. Luckily, that team talk has inspired them all, so we don't need to bring on Oblor. Oblor can put his feet up, relax, the 31-year-old, I believe he is now, and just prop his feet up. Gordinho can play out the next like four minutes because i'm probably going to bring on obilor because as you can see gardenio is only getting a 6.6 so we'll bring on obilor to replace gardenio but gerkan right now is playing it back to shirok we have emrahan nice ball over top malinkovic lovely opportunity but it's a save by mess gunok mess gunok has finally managed to do something in today's game so emrahan with the corner can he get a good corner which the in back post mad can't get onto it it's headed away and they have a counter going can Mehmet catch his man though? Mehmet has been lovely with his brace. Can his tackling be? Mm. Yeah, Mehmet. Naughty boy, naughty, naughty boy. Headed away though, Mammut will play back to Tagia. Tagia gets the ball over to the right hand side while Yusef plays lovely through ball. Demir 1 on 1 with Zubzuk. Lovely save. Lovely save from the Zubby of Zucks. Yusef will take the corner though. Yusef, will he go front post perhaps? No, Kublai, not it is away. It's now with Meta Khan. Meta Khan will come down this left hand side. Mehmet, please do not get yourself sent off. You're already on a yellow card. I will take you off just because you're on that yellow card and I don't want to risk that. But it's a ball whipped in for Yusef, who looks offside and he is offside. So we don't have to worry too much about that one. VAR? VAR? Seriously, we need VAR for that one? Come on, bruh. Look, you can see from this highlight, he's a mile off. Kaya is even a mile off. Like, both of their front men are a mile off. Come on, bruh. Don't be teasing us with that VAR rubbish. You don't need VAR in that situation. So, Godinho struggling. We'll take him off for Oblor. Godinho does need some time to settle in, though. As we know, he has never been to turkey or at least never been in terms of playing here as a club level mehmet does also need taking off we're going to bring sinan on give sinan an opportunity to perform nobody else is having a bad game so let's just head to the condition screen where demir is the one who needs a rest now i'm not sure we have enough turkish players no so we need to bring on Eren, I guess, for that side. Swap Malinkovic over, and we'll do it that way. That's triple substitution. We do have another one, but you know what? Look at these ratings. Everyone's doing well. Nobody's particularly out of condition. We could take Kubele off, but I don't think we need to swap out both our central defenders. So we'll just 
do triples up. We'll hold on to the other two. If we get any injuries, anyone else gets a yellow card and we want to take them off and just be safe in that regard. Tell Omar to man mark. That's not a bad shout. So we'll let him do that. 70th minute, 20 minutes remain. Lassen plays it short to Emrehan, who will just give the ball away. Emrehan, I'm not happy with that one. Mamut, though, plays it up to Tasking, goes up to K. Lovely dispossessed by Shirok, though. Sinan now, now to Shirok. Kublai over to Emrehan, plays back to Ovilo. Ovilo can he build from the back? He's going to play it over to Kublai. Kublai plays it up to Shirok. Shirok now over to Omar. He doesn't play it down the wing, instead, he goes inside and gives the ball away. Emrehan can't get onto it. Mammut will get it. Taskin now. Yusef, he has a man over on the right hand side if you can find him. Taskin will. Taskin has gone and found K. Kara, I believe that is. Plays it across space. Goal. Can will play a beautiful shot into the bottom right hand side. And they've pulled one back. So, it's not too worrying, but it's not exactly what we want to see, is it? We didn't want to see them slotting one away like that. So, Emrehan, you didn't really please me in that particular moment. Nor did you, Omar. So, although we don't particularly need to take you off, I am taking you off. So, double substitute in them two. Lassen will smash it down this left-hand side where Erin will try and get onto it. Erin has got the ball after a bad touch from Ponduk. And he smashes it against the goalkeeper instead of using Mad. He could have played it across to Mad. Let him also get the brace, but... Nope. So Sinan will whip in the corner. Goes back post. It is flying over the head of everyone. And yeah, it's a throw in. Interesting approach to the corner. Lassen will throw this in though. He goes short to Malinkovic. And that wasn't much of a highlight. I don't know why they bothered to show us that bit, to be honest. But we're into the 82nd minute. And it is slowly becoming the end of today's game 90th i don't think i even have coffee time at this point kublai will take a free kick short to smelter though now with sinan gets it over to Aaron. smelter's made a lovely run even though he runs at about two mile an hour we've given the ball away ali will now play it back to the goalkeeper he's hunted by milinkovic he hoops it down this right hand side yusef's made a lovely run he has care if he needs in support on this right hand side goes alone Got greedy. I think if he played that across to Kea, they could have probably punished and got a second goal. But he decided to be greedy, so that's what he gets. Mad though gets it from Shirok, just smashes it against Tagia. Tagia now plays it over to Mamut. Lovely tackle by Mad, plays it back to Volkan. Volkan, can he get an assist? No, he's just going to play it over to Malinkovic. Malinkovic does have Lassen on this right hand side. He doesn't find him, but Sinan will. Lassen now pulls it back for Volkan, and it's a free kick for offside. And we are already past the additional time, referee. I don't know what you're playing at. Tagia plays it back to Ali. Ali, back to the goalkeeper. Ref, are you not counting these minutes? Thank you. Finally, the referee looks at his watch, realises it's been the additional four minutes. And we'll finish this 1-3-1. One, one. So we had 15 shots to their 8 in the end. 9 on target to their 3. 1.03 XG to 1.01. 6 corners, 6 corners. 13 fouls to 5 fouls. 2 yellow cards to 1 yellow card. 90% passing to 84. 57% possession to 43. Don't ask me why that 84 was so slowly produced in my brain. But yeah, there it was. As you can see, best performer was Mehmet Ozcan with an 8.3. Our goalkeeper's up got a 6.7, the back line of 6.6 .6 from Schmelzer, 7 from Kublai, 6.8 from Oblon, and 7.3 from Lassen. Central midfield, we have Shrock on a 7.5 and a 6.7 .7 from Volkan, 6.5 from Eren, 6.6 .6 from Sinan, 7 from Milinkovic, 7.3 from Mad. Our substituted players, we got a 6.6 .6 from Godinho, 7 from Omar, 7.4 from Emrehan, 7 from Demir Gerkan, otherwise known, and of course Mehmet Ozkan with that 8.3 in best performer. So let's head to the dressing room. Good win, boys. Well done. Pat on the back and a little clap. And well, we have another one of the media coming to us. This time it's Engin Tas Delen from the Turkish Football Review. Everyone enjoyed Mehmet Ozkan's goal, a curling shot into the top corner from 22 meters. That sounds the opponent's fans. It must have been fantastic to see one of your players got a goal like that. We do it quite often. How did you rate it? It was a worth the admission feeling. It was worth paying just to come and see that one goal. 
although personally I would have been rather disappointed if we didn't get the victory as well. And as you can see, that's got us on win five straight. I'm not quite sure about that one. Is that just counting the league? Because we did lose the cup. Yeah, that's counting just the league. That's skipping over the fact that we lost the cup game. Interesting. So they don't believe in the cup, but we do, of course. And, well, I thank you all for watching. As you can see, we are in a lovely spot. Second in the league after 22 games. We are 51 points. Like I said, we are aiming for another about 21 points. So that seems pretty doable. 21 points in the remaining games. I think we can manage that. I think... A four-point gap on third place Galatasaray, although they have a ridiculous goal difference relative to us. We have the third best goal difference. I feel like Galatasaray will probably catch us. We're probably going to give up that second place spot. But it's nice, comfortable right now. We've got a four-point gap on them. They've got... Jesus. They've got a 12-point gap on four. Whilst we've got a four-point gap on them. Just to give it some sort of perspective. And then those two teams in 4th and 5th respectively have a 3-point gap on 6th. Although 6th place is due to play. So if Antilla Spore win their game, they can get on the same as them. But I thank you all for watching today's episode. Again, I'm rambling. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you all have a lovely night and goodbye.